This is a revision video for the third topic of AQA GCSE Chemistry or Combined Science, Quantitative Chemistry. In this video we're going to look at how to complete a percentage by mass calculation. The relative formula mass, or MR, of a compound tells you how much one mole of that compound weighs. We can calculate it by adding together the relative atomic masses of all of the atoms shown in the chemical symbol formula. For instance, here's glucose, a really familiar molecule. As you can see, it's made of six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms. If I look at my periodic table squares, I can read off the relative atomic mass of each one of those elements. And I can then calculate the relative formula mass by adding up the relevant numbers of each atom. So for instance, there are six carbon atoms, each with a mass of 12. There are 12 hydrogen atoms, each with a mass of one. And there are six oxygen atoms, each with a mass of 16. If I add all of those together, I get a relative formula mass for glucose of 180. Some simple formulae involve brackets, and it's important you take these into account. So when working out the relative formula mass of calcium hydroxide, I have to include one calcium atom with a mass of 40, but two oxygen atoms with a mass of 16, and two hydrogen atoms with a mass of one, giving me a relative formula mass of 74. We can use the relative formula mass of a compound to calculate the percentage by mass of each element within the compound. In other words, how much of the total mass of that compound is that one particular element that we're interested in. This sounds quite straightforward, but it's a really useful concept, particularly when you're synthesising new molecules or when you're analysing things and doing forensics. When you're synthesising something new or analysing a sample, it's really important to be able to check that the compound you've made is the thing you think you've made, or the compound you've picked up in a sample is actually what you think it is. And percentage by mass data is one of the fastest ways to realise if that isn't the case. So as the name would suggest, to work out the percentage by mass of an element within a compound, we need to know what the mass of the element is, and we divide that by the mass of the compound, and then multiply the whole thing by 100% to turn it into a percentage. Let's look at a couple of examples. Say, for instance, I had a sample of sugar, and I wanted to know, is this sugar glucose or not? I could use a machine called a mass spectrometer, and that would tell me how much of the different atoms were in my sample, so I could work out a percentage by mass for my sample. Then I could do the same thing, theoretically, for glucose, and I could compare the two numbers. And if they're the same, then my sample might be glucose, but if they're different, then it's definitely not. So to work out the percentage by mass of carbon in glucose, Firstly, I would need the relative formula mass of glucose. Then I would need to know how much carbon there is just in that formula for glucose. And then I would take my answer to step two and divide it by my answer for step one and times it by 100% to make a percentage. So I've already worked out the relative formula mass for glucose once. I do six times 12 because 12 is the relative atomic mass of carbon and there are six carbon atoms. And then 12 times one because there are 12 hydrogen atoms, each with a relative atomic mass of one. And then six times 16, because there are six oxygen atoms, each with a mass of 16. And that gives me a total of 180. My second step is just to look at the carbon. So just that six times 12, which is 72. And then I want to know what 72 out of 180 as a percentage. And it turns out it's 40%. Glucose is 40% carbon by mass. Here's another calculation of the same type. Let's say I had a sample of amino acids and I wanted to know were they glycine or not. My first step is to work out the relative formula mass, then to work out the mass just of the element that I'm interested in, and finally to calculate a percentage. The relative formula mass of glycine is two lots of 12 for carbon, five lots of one for hydrogen, one lot of 14 for nitrogen, and two lots of 16 for oxygen, which gives me a total of 75. That means that one mole of glycine weighs 75 grams. Next, I need to calculate the mass of just the nitrogen. Now here, I only have one nitrogen atom, so it's just one times 14. And then finally, I work out the percentage by doing 14 divided by 75 times by 100%. And that gives me an answer of 18.7%. Glycine is 18.7% nitrogen. Here are five more questions for you to have a go at to check you've got the hang of it. 
Remember, when you calculate the mass of the element, you need to take into account the number of atoms. Don't just use the relative atomic mass. So if there are seven atoms of the element you're looking at, you need to multiply the relative atomic mass by seven. Pause the video, and when you're ready to check your answers, press play again. So hopefully, you worked out that the percentage by mass of hydrogen in water is 11.1%. We do two because there are two hydrogen atoms divided by 18, which is the relative formula mass of water. Then hydrogen in methane makes up 25%. Carbon in carbon dioxide makes up 27%. Hydrogen in ammonia makes up 17.6%. And sulphur in sulphur dioxide makes up 50%. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope that you found that a useful introduction to percentage by mass calculations. For more quantitative chemistry videos, don't forget to like and subscribe below.